<laughs> the, the next question comes in from Jacob, and they say, uh, "Is th there's a there's a lot of info you've given in interviews about macro parts of world generation, like height maps and vegetation and the like. But can you speak a little bit about how the local map is generated? It seems like it is like this is generated on the fly. Uh, how do rivers link correct? How, how do you get rivers to link correctly, and how do you generate sites and buildings?" Yeah. Okay. So. Um... This is all. I haven't worked with this stuff for a long time, so some of this data may be, uh, in, you know, not not 100% correct, but it's basically going to be right. Uh, so let's talk about rivers first. Um, so in in the top level world, Jen, we've talked about how they flow to erosion, and then you can see them, right? They're just there. You see it. You see how they flow downhill, or they carved a canyon, or whatever. Um, but then when you zoom in to the next level down, it creates what we call the mid map, right? When you make a 16 by 16 for a given world map title. Now what it doesn't show you up above is the world map, like say your, your 129 by 129 world map has, a, has data that's fixed, that's, ran, that's generated randomly, but it's generated at the beginning of the world or after the rivers have flown, which is the edge leaving point of every river from uh, into another tile. So if you have a river tile where the river comes from the north and then exits to the east, there's a north crossing point and an east crossing point that's stored on in the memory permanently. It's not altered. Um, that's, uh, that's just up there. And then we also know the flow level of the river uh, based on its the rainfall and all that kind of stuff or whatever, but then it just stores it. Uh, so we have three stored quantities then. And then when it creates a mid-map, it takes that crossing point and the width of the river on the north and the east in that example, and then it does a random walk or whatever uh, between those two points. Um, then you've got a river of a given thickness in that 16 by 16 map, and then you're like, okay. Um, uh, oh, actually, it doesn't need to widen it because they're never wider than one tile. Uh, I mean, one, right, wider than one mid-map tile. So, so you don't even need to widen them yet. You just know how wide they are uh, lower down. So it goes from one point at the north in the mid-map to one point in the east in the mid-map. Now, when you zoom in on a given river tile, it's going to turn that one tile in the mid-map into a 48 by 48 uh, tile below. And this is where the mid-map also has crossing points. And because we use the same seed to generate the mid-map each time, those crossing points are uh, regenerated faithfully, right, um, every time. So now when you go to generate your 48 by 48s and you have several of them in a given fortress um, or when you're walking around in adventure mode, the crossing points are all generated no matter if you go from the south or if you load from the north or load from the east or load from the west as you're walking around or stitching forts together. Um, it'll have the same crossing point and the same width. So when you're generating this 48 by 48 chunk, it's not just the elevation data that it has of the corners and the center and so forth but it also has the crossing points of the rivers. Um, and then it can, uh, it can just stitch them together uh, and they always stitch perfectly and they always flow the right direction. Uh, so it's not, it's, it's just a little bit of extra data hanging around um, that you can regenerate faithfully or store all the time, uh, depending on how often you use it, et cetera, blah, 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 that um, uh, lets you get away with that kind of thing. And sites are similar. Uh, like the, the, uh, site itself has some very general information all the time about its population and the kinds of buildings that are in it and stuff. And then when you get close to it, because it can cross mid-map boundaries, they aren't stored in the mid-map specifically, but when you get close to it, it creates a thing called a site realization. Uh, it, it, opens, it, it, it opens up a new map. Um, again, not the zoomed-in map, but the mid-level map Excuse me, of the, um, of the site, which is at most 17 by 17. Um, uh, mid-map tiles and so then it has an idea of where the roads cross and where the buildings are it knows all the it knows all of the buildings now what and where they are and then the trick here is that every single building you see all the shops and everything um, all of the road intersections all of the bridges everything uh, are all restricted to live within 148 by 48 tile they never cross those boundaries. It never tries to make a building that is really long or, or crosses one of those boundaries so that everything in a given 48 by 48 is self-contained. All it needs to know is where's the road intersection? Where does it exit northeast, south, uh, west? Uh, how wide is the road? What's it made out of? And then the buildings, it, it can do whatever it wants. It knows when it comes in, I need to have like these two shops and X number of hovels or whatever. And then it just places them in the different parts of the, uh, uh, however it wants, uh, based on the seed. 
Um, but there's never any conflicts because they never cross the edges. I feel like and I'm, so forth. I feel like I'm reading your book again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's the, I, I think I, I mean, I, I remember there's a, there's a talk. I think it was a talk I did at NYU. You can look up practice like NYU practice Tarn Adams uh, and probably we'll find it for you. And it, it goes into this. It should, and there's lots of pictures. Um, of how the map works, how the crossing points work, and all that kind of stuff. I'll dig it up and stick it in the um, in the description for the YouTube vod.